Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today we're recording on Parker's Piece in Cambridge on the ice rink, uh, the outdoor ice rink, which is the North Pole, and we're going to be taking a look at passing. We're going to go all uh, through the, some of the main different passes that you use um, mostly while you're in a game, and we're also going to take a look at receiving a pass and also giving and receiving a pass while a player's moving. We're going to give you a couple of tips and hopefully clear up some grey areas that you might have in this area. I, myself, Chris, will be doing this video, accompanied by Max over here, so let's take a look at it. So let's take a look at some short passes, nice and slow. The first thing that we're going to talk about is where we put our hands on the hockey stick. You don't want your hands too far up here because you'll have no control. And again, you don't want to have your hands too far down here. You, the best way to do it is to get your forearm, put your hand over there and grab the stick right there. That's roughly about the right distance. No, a nice rule of thumb to keep in mind so you have the um, sort of best control over your stick um, equaling the best control over the puck. The next thing that you want to do while you're passing is make sure that you look at the target. You want to be able to see where the puck's going to be going. It's, there's no good of me staying here, looking at the puck and then passing it and not having any idea where the puck's gone until I've lifted my head up after the puck's left the blade of my stick. So you want to make sure that you look at the target. The next point is to make sure that you um, cup the puck. And what we mean by this is that the blade of your stick has two positions. It has an open position, which is like this, and it has a closed position, which is like that when you roll the um, wrists over and um, off a sort of cradle for the puck to sit in, which just allows you to control the puck much, much easier. The next part for that, for the passing is you also want to remember to draw the puck back in your pass. So this is my hockey stance over here. You can see nice athletic stance, uh, skates about shoulder width apart. And instead of passing the puck with the, the, with the um, blade of my stick and the puck right forward in my stance, I'm going to draw the puck back, allowing me to build up speed and momentum before I let send the puck over to Max over there, as you can see at the end of the ice rink. So the first point that you need to keep in mind, if, to increase the speed or power that you're going to be passing the puck at, all you want to do is remember to draw the puck back and transfer your weight onto this back skate over here or back leg as I'm getting ready to send the puck. And as I'm getting ready to send it, keep the blade of the stick and the puck flat on the ice so it doesn't lift up off the ice. And this gives me good control over it. Keep it on the ice for a few feet. And as I get about over here, I'm gonna be releasing the puck and making sure I point the blade of my stick and the toe to where I want the target to go. So let's take a look at some slow examples of this, keeping these points in mind, and we'll go from there. Another point that's great to keep in mind is that the more you get confident with passing and receiving passing or general stick handling is that you want to be able to get a feeling for where the puck is on the blade of your stick. You don't want to have to constantly look down at the puck. If you're receiving a puck, it means that you have to sort of glance down and see where it is before quickly receiving it. So be it. But you don't want to have your hands fixed down here. You want to be able to look up and feel for the puck on the blade of your stick. So this develops just a bit more coordination on the ice and it'll mean that you'll be able to keep an eye out for what other players are doing. Keep an eye out to see whether if the game's coming at you and obviously to be able to watch yourself while you're on the ice. So just be able to get a feel for where the, stick, the um, puck is on the end of your stick by simply feeling for it. The more you practice it, the more you'll develop and be able to be um, a lot more proficient at doing this. So the next thing that we're going to be taking a look at now is going to be powerful passes. So we've gone over doing a couple of passes at not too far a distance and at fairly low speeds. If you want to increase the, par the power and speed of the pass, um, if you want to get the puck to them quicker, or if there's other players around that you want to sort of um, send the puck to one of your teammates without one of them grabbing it. Uh, to the trick behind the powerful passes is exactly the same motions. So you're going to want to be able to do everything exactly the same as we said. So uh, cut the puck with the blade of your stick. You want to draw it back to build up that momentum and speed. You're rolling over the, the wrists to point your um, stick blade and toe to the target but at the end of the um, sort of process of uh, tra transferring your weight from this back leg over here to your front leg you're going to want to lean in on the pass much much more so while I'm over here my weight's in this leg over here but I'm going to want to transfer my weight and really lean onto this leg and push off of this leg to be able to give me a bit more power and the next bit that you want to do is when the puck is um, getting ready to get sent from the blade of the stick you want to pull back on your top hand and push forward on your bottom hand to give it a bit more power so those are the points you need to keep in mind. You really want to sort of lean into the pass and snap your hands, roll your wrists over to generate a lot more power. And remember to keep the blade of the stick in that um, nice, um, uh, the um, nicer cupped position that we cup, uh, talked about in the beginning of the video and keep the blade of the stick on the ice until you're getting ready to roll over just to make sure that the puck stays flat and you don't end up giving it sort of like a wrist shot or a slap shot and the puck goes really high in the air. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of some powerful passes and go from there.
So now taking a look at receiving a pass on my forehand, the points that you need to keep in mind, as we said, and the same thing that you do if you're catching a ball, you want to be able to cradle the puck as it comes in. So you don't want to have a stiff stick, you want to be able to cradle the puck as it comes in and make sure that you're rolling the embladed stick over so it's cupped and the puck's supported quite nicely as it comes in. So I'll show you a couple of examples of this. Keep in mind, again, another skill that you want to develop is being able to feel for where the puck is, but this will come with practice and time and experience as you perform this drill. So again, I'll show you what happens on my forehand if I receive a pass and I don't cut the puck as it comes in. You want to be able to cut the puck as you would if you're catching a ball to sort of um, make it easier for you to receive it so it doesn't bounce off the stick's blade. I'll show you what happens if I don't cradle and cut the puck as it comes in with an example. Once again, if I keep my hands nice and stiff, you can see what happens. The puck just bounces away. Remember to keep soft hands. If you've seen the Mighty Ducks movies, remember soft hands as you saw with the scene where they were passing eggs on the ice. Keep that in mind. So as the puck comes in, you can see I cradle the puck, I move my stick blade back, cradle the puck so it doesn't bounce off. And the importance of being able to keep the, st the um, blade of your stick um, cupped around the puck is it supports the puck so the puck doesn't ricochet off. And that's another point to why I move my stick back as the puck comes in. So one more time. So what you want to be able to do is just be, make sure that you have the soft hands cradling the puck as it comes in. Cradle the puck, send it back. Cradle the puck as it comes in. Send it back. Another point that I'd, point, uh, I'd like to mention is that you don't want to stick handle too many times. And what I mean by that, if I show you, if I send, uh, get a puck received, I receive the puck. You don't want to be messing around with it too much like this, looking around to what you want to do and then passing it back off because all that time that you waste stick handling could be the time it takes for somebody to come up behind you and steal the puck from you. So well, at the beginning when you're practicing this, you want to be able to cradle the puck as it comes into you and send it back. As you're developing this, if you're new on the ice, you want to receive the puck stick handle with it maybe once or twice and then send it back but you don't want to do this too many times as it creates an opportunity for the puck to be stolen from you. So now we're going to take a look at passing on your backhand. The backhand's a bit more tricky because the stick's blade doesn't have that nice curve that makes it nice and easy to give a pass or receive a pass. So what you need to do to be able to create a bit more of a curve or pocket for the puck to sit into is just roll your wrists over and as you can see it sort of creates a better area for the puck to sit into giving you a bit more control rather than if you had the back of your stick like that because it might come off um, the toe and be a bit more hard to control. So the same things are still going to stand, you're going to want to draw the puck back. This time, same thing again, weight's going to be in this leg as I draw the puck behind me. And as I come forward, I'm transferring my weight onto this right skate over here. At the same time as being able to roll my wrists over and follow through and point with the toe of the stick's blade to the target or where I want the puck to go. Same thing still um, apply, you want to keep that stick nice and flat on the ice to give you nice control over it and also so the puck doesn't lift up off the ice as you do this. You're not giving a backhand shot, you're giving a backhand pass. So that's why you want to keep the stick's blade nice and flat on the ice to be able to keep the puck flat on the ice. And then you're just going to follow through, roll over your wrists and point through to the target where you want the puck to go. Keeping in mind, as always, if you want to be able to uh, add a bit more speed and power, you just want to get that transfer in, lean a bit more on, this, on your um, edges, you want to push off that back leg and be able to roll over and um, create the snapping motion with your wrists. And again, send it back. One more time. Break it. Send it back. So now we're going to take a look at receiving a pass on your backhand. The backhand, of course, is a bit tricky to receive a pass on because, as you know, the curve isn't the same on the other side. So you don't have as much of a pocket for the puck to sit in. On your forehand, you can see that the puck is cradled quite nicely, but on your backhand, it's a bit more difficult. So to be able to cradle the puck nicely on your backhand, you need to be able to roll your wrists over to create a bit more of a pocket for the puck to sit in when you receive it, which just allows you to have a little bit more control over the puck. Of course, this is um, receiving a pass um, and being able to control the puck after you receive it is the same as catching. When you're catching a ball, you don't just keep your hands out for the ball to bounce off of your hands. As the ball comes in, you cradle it and catch it, which helps you to have more control over it and to minimize the chance of it bouncing away. Same thing applies when you're catching a puck as it's coming towards you. When the puck's coming in towards you, you want to move the stick blade back, cradle the puck to be able to control it so it doesn't bounce away. This applies. And another point that you want to keep in mind when you're receiving a pass is to develop the skills to not have to be able to stare at the puck as it's coming into you. You want to be able to look at where the puck's coming from to make sure it's coming towards you correctly so you can either use your skate or your stick so you know exactly where it's going to be coming in so you can receive it properly. I'll show you what happens if I receive a pass and I keep my hands nice and stiff, nice and hard um, and don't sort of cradle or cup the puck as it comes in. 
You can see the puck simply just bounces off the stick's blade, which is why it's so important to be able to cup the puck as it comes in. So when I receive that puck, I want to be able to cup it as it comes in to sort of reduce the amount of um, risk of it bouncing away. And of course, roll your wrists over so you have um, that sort of cradle or pocket for the puck to sit in. It's exactly the same thing when I'm receiving passes as you can see on my backhand. And I'll show you the exact same thing happens if you don't keep your soft hands when you're receiving um, passes on your forehand. So you need to make sure that you're glancing at where the puck is coming from, keeping an eye on where the game's coming from. And also, if you need to, just quickly glance down to make sure your stick's in line with the puck, but just try not to stare at it too much. Be, um, you need to be able to develop your uh, ability to feel for where the puck is and also to know where the blade of your stick is on the ice. So let's have a couple of examples of me receiving a pass on my um, backhand and uh, take the points that I've given you in mind when receiving. And of course, last point is make sure you have soft hands. You don't want to have nice, stiff, hard hands. You want to have soft hands so you're able to cradle the puck as it comes in. As you can see, I cradle the puck. I move my stick back to be able to catch it and to be able to control it as I send it back. And again, send it back. One more time. Cradle it. Send it back. So now we're going to take a quick look at giving a, a pass while the player's moving. The important thing that you want to keep in mind while you're doing this is that you don't want to pass to where the player is as he'll be gone by the time the puck gets there. So you want to, puck to, where the, you want to pass the puck roughly to where the player's going to be going to so they can pick the puck up and the puck keeps moving, the player keeps moving, the game keeps moving forward and of course your team's still in control of the puck. So let's take a look at that. We're going to pass the puck a little bit, um, a few feet in front of where the player's going to be, um, sort of between uh, 10 and 5 feet in front of them depending on how fast they're going. You're going to have to be the judge of the speed so you know exactly how far to put the puck in front of them. So let's take a look at that. As you can see there, what I'm doing is passing the puck to where the player's going to be, not where the player is. So by the time the puck gets to him, it reaches in front of him and he's able to scoop the puck up and keep going. Another thing that you can do is pass the puck or just send the puck a little bit, a few feet, sort of 10 to 15 feet in front of the player and have it sort of slow down or stop in front of them so they can just scoop it up. So if there's not a lot of them, sort of the opposite guys or the other guy's team around the um, area that you're passing to, you can just float the puck in front of the player and it'll stop in front of him or roughly in front of him and he can just simply pick it up and keep moving forward. So I'll show you a couple of examples of me just floating the puck in front of the player so we can just scoop it up and keep the game moving forward. As always, we're going to be passing in front, not behind. So as you can see there, what I'm doing is just floating the puck in front of the player. So by the time they get to the puck, it's already slowed down enough for them to be able to just scoop it up and keep moving forward. So when you're receiving a pass when the puck's moving, the two points that you want to keep in mind is keep the puck in front of the player so they have control over it and keep the puck moving so they don't skate past it. So some of the other things that you can expect to happen is that not all of the passes that you give and receive are going to be tape to tape, meaning that they're not going to go exactly to the stick's blade. All you need to do is keep the puck moving and keep the puck in front of you, so provided you get your skates or your body in front of the puck to keep it moving forward is okay. So some of the things that you can do or some of the things that I like to do is if I receive a pass that's too close to the centre of my skates, sometimes you'll be forced to sort of um, bring your stick down like this, or it's called choking up, and then trying to stop the puck between your legs. As you can see what I've done there is I've slid my hand from the top of my stick down below to keep more of the stick's blade on the ice because if I do it like this you can see that it's just the tip of the stick's blade that's on the ice which doesn't give me that much area to be able to cradle or receive the puck. So bring your hands down and uh, keep more of the uh, stick's uh, blade on the ice in contact with the ice more chances of you stopping that puck. Another thing that I like to do is put my skates together and just catch the puck with the blade of my skates, um, which sort of helps me. I'm not too fond of using my stick if it's between my legs. I simply like to put my skates together and catch the puck like that. I'll show you a couple of examples of exactly what I mean. The puck comes in. I just use my, my skates to stop it from moving and I can pass it back. So just be creative while you're on the ice. You don't always have to use your stick to stop the puck. So long as you keep the puck moving and you keep the puck in front of you, it's all right. So this has been a quick look from Chris and Max on showing you how to give and receive a pass in the game and also giving and receiving a pass to a player that's moving. So hopefully these tips were helpful. If you want more information, be sure to click on the link down below to hockeytutorial.com. And a big thanks to the North Pole for allowing us to record this video in Cambridge. And as always, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos that we post out. And of course, be sure to follow the Facebook page and register at hockeytutorial.com for more great tips. Take care till next time, guys, and thanks for watching. And of course, a special thanks to Ollie and the guys from the North Pole for allowing us to shoot this video at this ice rink. Massive thanks. Take care till next time, guys.